Well, hello, hello, everybody, and a welcome to today's 2019 Inspire Challenge webinar. It's an opportunity for you all tuning in to ask any questions you have about the Inspire Challenge. And I'm joined here today by Brian and Joe, who will Brian, Joe, and Ceci, who will um, introduce themselves throughout the course of the webinar. Um, but before we get started, let me just make sure that you all can see us and hear us okay. Um, so if you can see us and hear us okay, please do type into the chat that um, the audio is clear, visual is clear. I see that we have people joining us from Minnesota, from the UK, from Colombia, from all over the, from all over the world. So that's very exciting to see. Um, so yeah, so we're just gonna get started. I can see that people can see us and hear us okay. So Jawu, um, if you go ahead and introduce yourself, that would be awesome. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Yao Ku. Uh, I'm working on the big data platform uh, together with Brian and Ceci and others. So I will be presenting a few slides about our program, uh, CGIR in general, and about the Inspire Challenge, uh, which is kind of a big overview. And then uh, Brian will go through a few more slides on the innovation part. And then, yeah, we will open up the floor to get your question. Um, Oh, so Brian, do you want to introduce yourself first? Or should I go ahead? Hi, everybody. My name is Brian King. I serve as coordinator of the platform for big data. OK, and, and Ceci? Hi, everybody. Uh, I am a support resource uh, for the big data platform. Uh, I help manage uh, both the convention and uh, the Inspire Challenge. And so I'm really excited to hear about your questions and to help make sure everybody gets the highest quality uh, competitive proposals together for this year. OK, great. So um, let me share my screen. So can everyone see my screen? I'm, I'm just showing the Inspire Challenge website, uh, web page where you can find all the information. Awesome, looks good. OK, good. So uh, by now, um, the Inspire Challenge application has been open for a while, and it will close uh, in, on June 17. So by now, and by joining this webinar, I assume you already know what we are looking for and what you will be asked to uh, apply for. But just to give a just a quick overview. Uh, so this is a page you will, find, oh, you will find all the information about the challenge and the categories of um, uh, this year's challenge topic and yeah, how we are helping you to find partners and et cetera. So uh, if you haven't, uh, uh, so just make sure to go through all the information on this web. Right. Uh, especially at the bottom, you will find the link to the FAQ page, the frequently asked question. And this is the page uh, we accumulated all the questions and answers uh, we received and we provided for last uh, two rounds of Inspire Challenge. So yeah, again, uh, go through, make sure to go through each, each of these questions and answers. Um, and you will find a lot of information probably already asked by someone else and answered by us. So that's the kind of uh, background information we want everyone to have. Um, and today I'm going to just quickly provide some additional information um, that I thought might be useful for you to know. In case you are new to CGIR, uh, I am not. <laughs> but, uh, so we are kind of a system of 15 international agriculture research centers around the world. Uh, we have, yeah, basically research centers on many different domain and a, uh, thematic areas uh, in agriculture. Um, I'm based in Washington, D.C., working on uh, the food policy related research area uh, at uh, International Food Policy Research Institute. Uh, Brian is based in Cali, Colombia, uh, uh, working at SEAT, uh, International Center for Tropical Agriculture, but we are both working on this uh, CGIR platform for a big data and agriculture program. So you can find more information about um, 
uh, the us, uh, CGIR centers at uh, this link, the CGIR.org and research centers. And yeah, you, as you can see, um, so our research kind of reach uh, is very broad and it, we are truly global. Uh, there are 8,000 scientists working under CGIR kind of umbrella and we all work together. Uh, in addition to that 15 centers, we also have 15 programs. Uh, we call it a CGIR research program. And there are 15 programs uh, and again, the many different kind of cross-cutting issues and cross-cutting topics and, and kind of community-based kind of um, coordination across CGIR centers. And we also have three programs uh, we call research support platforms and we are one of them uh, the platform for big data agriculture located here and there are other two other support platforms uh, one for breeding and one for gene banks and again uh, you can learn a lot more about what each of these platforms and programs are working on at, at this link and i'm giving you this information uh, because this is actually relevant for uh, the reason we are uh, organizing this Inspire Challenge program and what we are looking for. I will get to that later. So within our program, uh, Platform for Big Data in Agriculture, we, our activities are centered around these three big kind of categories. Uh, one is called Organize. Uh, we support CGIR Center and our partner to better organize all the data and knowledge product and our really uh, the information asset uh, so that this can be uh, more useful and this can innovate uh, other types of application and uh, research project, etc. So we, we do a lot of work on organized, uh, under the organized kind of uh, module, then yeah, we will have other chance to um, the, the interest in the layer. Convene is the second module, we call it module, and, and this is where we bring our CGIR scientists, our partners together. Uh, so we organize this annual convention program uh, that everyone is invited uh, to participate. This year we will have this convention in October uh, in Hyderabad, India, where ICRI said one of CGIR center is headquartered in. And lastly, but not the least, uh, Inspire is one of our kind of flagship module and flagship program. Uh, this is where we uh, provide resources and uh, you know, support this pilot project where CGIR researchers can partner with technical partners to yeah, develop innovative projects. So uh, we have done this Inspire Challenge program since the beginning of platform, uh, which was 2017. So this is third year we are organizing this challenge program. And yeah, we got a lot of excitement from CGR scientists and we, we were able to bring a lot of excitement in agriculture, digital agriculture area. And uh, Brian will quickly go through that uh, review later. Um, just uh, again, uh, the high level summary is an annual competition program uh, awarding grant for pilot project. Uh, we will support uh, CGIR-led. Uh, this is important. Uh, so we are forcing you to partner uh, between CGIR and external partners. And yeah, and that, that's really one of the important kind of uh, requirements for you to consider. And it has to be innovative and has to be inspiring project. I will get to that a little bit more later. Uh, we will award up to five pilot projects, uh, each of which will have 100,000 uh, US dollar. And one or more, uh, depending on how uh, the, the quality and kind of uh, the, the proposal we will get, uh, one or more scaling up project with higher amount of grant. Um, and this is only applicable for the cohort of our uh, Inspire Challenge Awardees in 2017 and 18. So we are looking for deliverables uh, on kind of uh, four different areas, proof of concept uh, or data set or data product workflow or new tools and services, uh, meaning you have to make something. This is not purely for research project. Uh, this is not for writing proposals or yeah, it's a little bit different. Uh, this is not about writing really report and paper. This is to develop something to show uh, what you can make. Uh, for these challenge topics. Uh, for each of the challenge topics, I, I put a link here. I, again, on the website, uh, you will see 
uh, the uh, full narrative and synthesis uh, of uh, each of the topic and what we are looking for, uh, revealing food system flow, monitoring pests and disease, empowering data-driven farming, and sensing a renewing ecosystem, which is a new topic introduced this year. So make sure to follow the link or, or um, visit the website and read through all the description we put out. And yeah, that, that will be a good starting point for you. So uh, especially for the pre-assessment period, uh, like to shortlist uh, from 100 something application we expect to receive at the initial stage, uh, we are going to look at three different areas. And again, this information is already in the website, but uh, let me just reiterate that. The, you need to prove that you are developing a meaningful partnership. And this is something that we believe in from the beginning that uh, CGIR, uh, scientists can really synergize uh, with technical partners outside of CGIR. So you have to highlight what those partnerships will bring to CGIR. Uh, so it will be better to highlight something that we haven't had before, we haven't yet really um, you know, developed fully within CGIR. And uh, it will be good to bring partners with proven verifiable track record of success, of course. and. But however, be open and creative to connect with unconventional partners. So we have received many questions, like whether the partner needs to be big private sector company. No, absolutely not. Uh, this could be like small startup company uh, anywhere in the world uh, who has brilliant ideas and good skill set will synergize with CGIR. Uh, you don't have to be based in the US, you don't have to be based in a developed country. So I mean, so it just can be uh, anybody, anyone, uh, whoever can show the synergetic effect, uh, synergies between CGIR and your partner. Innovativeness, uh, again, uh, this is another thing. Uh, uh, really important, and uh, Brian will go in depth in uh, following me. Uh, you have to identify opportunities that are not currently already uh, being provided or already existing within CGIR. So it will be better to find something uh, that are not really um, well addressed uh, in or well supported within CGIR portfolio. That's why I showed the list of CGIR uh, the centers and programs. Uh, so there are a lot of things going on already uh, within CGR, but uh, we are looking for something that hasn't been really done yet, uh, something more innovative ideas and innovations that we haven't really tapped into before. That's something we are looking for. Oh, and, and just uh, the, another important thing is that uh, from previous two rounds, uh, we saw judges highly kind of appreciate the applicant uh, the kind of effort to make, you know, the, uh, how they are going to assess the impact, how they are going to show the result, and how they are really, um, you know, evaluate uh, their progress and processes. And, and that that will be very important, and that will be a big advantage for you. Uh, I mean, from the beginning, even if it's really truly new ideas and never been never done before you still have to have something to say how you are going to prove and how we will know that this works and this is making impact this has a potential at the end of the process so and something along the line uh, you have to be able to defend yourself um, and at the business case is not really strongly required but uh, we saw judges will ask you uh, so I mean how you are going to make it sustainable in the future etc so I mean it's a typical question you will probably get from any other challenge program so uh, just get ready to uh, have some ideas around it and lastly, but again, not the least, uh, data, data, data. And so you you will have to uh, come prepared uh, how this is this will be really enriched and empowered by data. Uh, so this has to be big data driven or just driven by data. Um, so you have you will be asked to incorporate existing data or add, adding value to. Uh, to any data you will be collecting, etc. So it should be something uh, a lot more than the new data you'll be collecting through new tool. So uh, we will value uh, your effort to make it as a kind of big data project, a big data pilot. Uh, just literally our program is called Big Data in Agriculture. So we will want to see how different types of data, different domains of data linked together uh, to uh, help us gain insight that we didn't have before. However, uh, just uh, adding to that, uh, be sensitive 
to the responsible data management kind of uh, concept, uh, you have to respect the ethics and uh, or the responsible data management guidelines. Um, and also highlight uh, the fa uh, fair principle that CGIR uh, that collectively uh, we are trying to achieve. It, this, is, this means a findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data set. Uh, we will um, want to see the data product to be open, uh, openly accessible. It, it doesn't have to be 100% open in case you have some private uh, private sector like uh, proprietary algorithm, etc. Consider uh, that there, there are some exceptions that we can make. But in general, as a principle, we want everything to be uh, transparent, open, and you know, following open standards so that uh, the data product you will be developing or we'll be using are uh, truly transparent and it can inspire other people to do the same. Um, and, and just quick overview in the process. Um, so you will have to submit your proposal through form uh, on through the link on the website by June 17th. And the pre-assessment will follow immediately after. And it will be uh, the pre-assessment will shortlist your proposal uh, pool to about 10 to 15 proposals. And, and they will be invited to the convention, uh, which will be in October in Hyderabad again. And there, so you're not done yet. Uh, that, that's kind of the beginning of the journey. Uh, so that there, uh, you will be invited to present your work in many different places. And first is innovation marketplace. This is kind of a uh, booth area. Uh, during the convention area, you will meet with convention partners and also the judges uh, have a chance to explain what your ideas are, what your project pitches are, and then you will get feedback uh, right there. And then you will have a chance to make a pitch in the room uh, to the judges and also to the audience. And again, that there you will be asked some critical question. You will have to, be able to answer, and you will we will see how you present the idea and how audience sees the idea, uh, the potential, etc. Um, and, and following all, all this program, at the end of three day convention, uh, we will uh, organize a award ceremony, and that's the uh, place where. Yeah, we will, we will, who will receive the award and you will be called up onto the stage and take these pictures, and etc. So uh, by the end of the convention, so October 18th is the day the winners of 2019 Innovation uh, Inspire Challenge awardees will be announced. Uh, following that, uh, so we, you will be asked to develop actually full proposal, a uh, work plan. It's, it's not really big proposal, but you will have to give a little bit more detail on how you're going to ask, how, how you're going to uh, really you know, develop the project and how you're going to use the uh, budget as such, a little bit more in detail work plan. And then uh, budget will be dispersed through uh, CGR Center. So the, again, uh, the CGR Center who is partnering uh, in each of the project will be receive the money as a first recipient and, and they will be responsible to uh, or kind of you know, develop the full, full pro project uh, from the center point of view. And we already have a system set up to do so. Uh, so whoever, if you're not in CGIR, and don't worry about this part. Uh, so your CGIR partner, we already know how to make this work um, and, and we will help you to make it as uh, least painful as possible. That's a bit difficult. Okay, so a few final remarks. Yeah, again, I, I, I cannot uh, emphasize enough that this is not a typical research project. Uh, I saw some of the brilliant ideas and new partnership proposed and every checkbox kind of uh, tick, except uh, the deliver deliverable they are uh, planning to develop was a research paper or, or kind of workshop, uh, uh, which is not really something we were looking for. So you will need to make something uh, to contribute to this uh, innovation process. You can still blend research and scientific approaches uh, into this process, but again, do not make it as a pure research process. That's not what we are looking for. Your pitch will be questioned really hard, uh, and not by few, just few judges, but, but we will have donors uh, in the room, and we will have private sector partners and public sector partners, industry leaders, and smallholder farmers themselves. So we will have farmers always sitting in the front row of the, uh, the convention. So yeah, just consider all these uh, the questions you will be asked 
and, and just, just be prepared to answer any question from their perspective, how your ideas really help them to make you know, uh, impact. And through the process, uh, what I just personally also observed is that uh, this may not be suitable for older researchers, really traditional researchers. Um, yeah, I so saw sometimes just really tr struggle to make that all the connections of what they are uh, trying to do uh, to answer to all the questions being asked to, uh, in the room. So yeah, again, um, just to, uh, think hard uh, how you will be uh, delivering all the answer to the question I asked this to be asked by this, this group of people. Uh, be responsive to the requirement, obviously. Uh, do not recycle uh, research proposals. Um, and also importantly, uh, so you have to do your homework. Uh, our judges will be uh, pretty much kind of um, uh, really in the front line of digital agriculture and big data in agriculture. So if something similar has been already happened or something similar is already going on, they will know, so they will ask you, hey, uh, there are this project and there's this program already in place. How is your idea different? How you'll be making even more successful? So uh, don't be surprised <laughs> you will, when you get to ask uh, that this question at the end of the road. Uh, so just do your own review and homework what others are doing in the same area first. So that, that was one of my method. So yeah, that's all from me, so just really Good luck. Um, this is a this is an exciting journey, um, and I I we got really good feedback from all the people participated. Uh, of course, maybe except for those who didn't get uh, awarded. But um, yeah, so through the process, uh, we learn a lot, and every everyone seems to be learning a lot. And this will be also a really good opportunity for CGR and our partners who have really good ideas and really good uh, innovative innovative. You know, even if it's a blue sky ideas, um, it didn't really have chance to get it funded and get it really, um, you know, take off the ground. And this this will be your chance, and we will help you make that um, happen. So thanks for your attention. Um, so that's my turn, and I will get Brian to follow up with me after this. Okay. So how do I do this? Okay, so I will stop sharing, and Brian, I think you can share from your screen at this point. Sure, all right. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Brian. I'm, uh, in case you didn't catch me at the beginning, I, I serve as coordinator of the platform for big data at CGIAR. And um, I wanted to speak briefly. Let me turn off uh, so people won't be Skyping me here. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, good. Um, so I wanted to speak a little bit about how we're learning about this process and, and why we set out to, to learn about this process. Um, so um, here, let me share my screen a little bit here. Let's see. Yes, share. So um, those who, all right. So you know, we say about the platform for big data that we're trying to find ways to use data and big data to solve agricultural development problems faster, better, and at greater scale. And, um, you know, innovation and innovation strategy, we feel is a really key part of how we can do that. And very specifically, um, how can we find new ways in which uh, CGIR researchers and research outputs can, um, can find new pathways to, 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 um, to, to having an impact in food and farming systems uh, around the world. And so, um, you know, we, we set up this process, um, here, let me, uh, there's a, all right. So we've been, we've been really actively studying this question. And so if you poke around on the Inspire page website, I think it's under, it's like along the side, on the right-hand side, there's a paper there um, where we looked at all of the submissions from the 2017 uh, uh, cohort and, and process, and we coded them and we tried to see what we could learn from them and, and if there were ways that we could be uh, actually targeting uh, innovation uh, better. Uh, in this paper as well is a little bit about, uh, a little bit of analysis about 
actually why we need such a challenge in, in the agricultural development space. And, um, you know, what we observed and then through multiple conversations with impact investors and development funders and others is that um, even though there are great processes and places for um, digital innovation around the world, there are iHub, physical kind of iHub, you know, startup accelerator type type places and, you know, hackathons and data jams and co-creation events and so forth. Um, if you start to look into those examples a little bit, you see that the success rate for uh, digital agriculture innovations is very low. And that's and part of that is because the interest, there are a lot of other kind of much more digitized sectors out there that are attracting a lot more uh, interest from startups and, and from investors. And also because, I mean, this is something that we surmise, we, I think we think that actually agriculture is a lot more complicated than, um, say, a kind of purely digital business model. I mean, we have to deal with, um, you know, the complexity of, of agricultural production and food systems and so forth in ways that maybe a more purely digital uh, company might not be able to, or a digital, purely digital innovation might not be able to. And so what, you know, what we start set out to do is to try to understand better, okay, well, how can we target innovations in the ag tech space and actually increase and improve um, the success rate. And so uh, we did, you know, looking at the 2017 cohort, we we, we spun through, um, you know, coded them in several ways, and we looked at some key questions about uh, those submissions, like um, what makes a suitable environment for digital innovation and agriculture? Um, who are good partners? Um, who should be targeted by these innovations? Um, where in food systems does it appear that there's a great opportunity for, for innovation and, and, and digital disruption? Um, what, what data are, are uh, most important or being used? And, um, and then most importantly, I think, to this question I'm talking about innovation strategy is how to match innovation types to the problems that they seek uh, to address. And so on this last point, we used a... Um, Let's see, here we are. Um, on this last point, we used a, um, a, a pretty well-known framework out in the, um, in the business literature about innovation strategy for, for firms or for companies. And um, it's just a pretty simple matrix that enables you to class, you know, actually classify types of innovation. And um, it's really the relationship, according to this one, uh, you know, proponent who developed the, the matrix. It's really the relationship between how well defined the domain knowledge is um, around solving a problem and how well defined the problem is. And so uh, uh, the researcher named Greg, uh, Greg Sattel, and he does a lot of more kind of organizational research and business, business, uh, business research. Um, you know, classified breakthroughs, innovation, sustaining innovation, basic research, um, and disruptive innovation. And so, um, you know, when we started our process, so many of our, uh, in our 2017, so many of our submissions, about half of our submissions fell into what would be the basic research realm. And, you know, this may not be entirely fair. It was really, we're trying to look at how specific the descriptions were of the domain knowledge and specific descriptions were of the problem. Um, and, um, and, you know, so we said, okay, if we're really trying to solve agricultural problems uh, faster and at greater scale, basic research innovations are not the kinds of innovations that have the time to maturity to really um, affect the, you know, the, the changes that we're trying to have in food and farming systems. Uh, basic research also tend to be kind of a broad utility and how that turns into solutions um, is, is really um, uh, a bit unpredictable. Um, you know, there were three or four different uh, teams doing very discrete and separate, you know, research working on separate questions that over the course of about 10 years actually resulted in um, uh, CRISPR, you know, the gene editing. Uh, innovation. And so, uh, I mean, basic research, though, extremely valuable, um, uh, is, is not where we're trying to target with this. And so, 
Um, on the basis of the 2017, you know, looking at the 2017 process, we made some not huge adjustments to the to the application process. Um, we added, uh, well, we moved into a Google form so we could capture all of the ways we were coding submissions by geography, by partner, by data type, and so forth. And we also added a question where a couple of questions where we asked proponents to define the problem and define uh, the domain knowledge, basically. And um, we think that may have helped and with um, with targeting. And this is a bit of a busy slide here. But um, if you look at, OK, so down here, uh, basic research innovation in uh, 2017. 54% of the submissions were basic research innovation ones. Um, uh, whereas in uh, 2018, that went down to 17%. Uh, With regard to, and so, and then these other different types of innovations actually saw us, you know, a, a, a corresponding uh, bump. And I think any of these other different types of innovations actually seems like it could be, you know, it would have a shorter time to maturity and it could actually connect into the types of impacts that we're trying to have. And so if you really want to understand how the method, you know, how we're thinking about the methodology, how we're, we're, we're tinkering or adjusting a little bit this process, this is really a, a set of guiding principles that we're using um, in, in, in doing that. And I think that, um, you know, we've here, these are some, uh, some stuff about centers that submitted. So, if you look at, this is just the, the final slide up I'll put here. So we need to be targeting, if we're talking about having impact in food and farming systems, um, you know, one would expect that we would have, you know, next users or, or um, you know, target beneficiaries, um, you know, be farmers. And so um, in um, 2017, 35% of submissions targeted farmers when 2018, 73% of submissions targeted farmers. Um, within, uh, and there was a significant bump as well, you know, actually a somewhat of a bump in terms of targeting policymakers and, you know, researchers, there, there are justifiable ways that researchers can be beneficiaries, uh, target beneficiaries of these. And so I don't want to imply that it must absolutely must be farmers, but um, I think we're on to something in terms of targeting innovation and sourcing the kinds of innovations that we're trying to do that um, that are in line with that mission of you know that overall mission statement or goal statement of solving agricultural problems faster um, and, and at greater scale um, I think lastly here I'll stop uh, sharing that or maybe I'll stop sharing entirely yeah so I think lastly uh, just some observations about um about evidence so um you know we've we've done two cycles now of startup awards and then we made our first batch of scale up awards last year and what we asked scale up awardees to do was to really present actually all of them the whole of the cohort to present what evidence they were able to to, to pull together over the course of that year, that startup year. And I and we recognize that a year is not enough time to do a full impact assessment um, and reach some of the kind of gold standards of, of evidence um, in, in many cases. In fact, the, the final awardee um, in some sense was very fortunate because they had the conditions to do a full randomized control trial. Uh, but we recognize that that's not you know, something we should expect of everything. But the idea that we're generating evidence about these digital interventions in food and farming systems along the way that we're testing out these new ideas and these innovations. It's something really unique about this process. And you know, we've started in the last couple of months with reaching out to other partners that could be co-developers and co-funders of this process. And specifically, this piece about evidence um, is really unique and really interesting to them. Um, and we've been speaking with impact investors and global development, um, uh, you know, funders and uh, um, uh, multilateral banks and so forth. And this evidence piece is, is of great interest to everybody that we speak to. And in fact, at a couple of different events that we've seen in the last few months, 
even the kind of venture capital profile of you know folks that are interested in ag tech innovations are starting to notice that um, you know the hype is wearing a bit thin and the need for really solid evidence um, is becoming more and more evident. And so um, I just like to say that we're onto something really special here and we're trying to target innovations in ways that we can increase the hit rate specifically uh, for our sector and we're trying to sort of learn along the way. And so uh, those are some of the reasons why we created such a, a, um, uh, you know, a multi-stage and, and very competitive uh, process because we're trying to improve our targeting and we're, we're trying to generate uh, evidence along the way. So um, thank you, I'll stop there. And uh, we've got um, uh, some good time for, for Q&A. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, um, Brian and Jawu, for sharing. Um, I do see a lot of questions that have come through on the chat, so it's exciting. This is definitely the purpose for people to be able to share the questions that they have. Um, so I yeah, have a quick, quick comment before we dive into questions, and I want to leave as much time as possible. Um, but it, it's kind of a twofold comment. The first is uh, Jawu touched on it. I think Brian touched on it a little bit, but... Um, meaningful collaboration is exactly what it sounds like. It is collaboration that is substantial and meaningful, and it's not just using a data set or using a technology or, you know, soft partnership. It, it's, it is pulling together two separate entities into something that is greater than just those two individual organizations or teams or whatever they're working on. And so this is something that I feel like uh, often folks miss in in that this initial um, submission. And we want to just think about what is each person bringing to the table and make sure that that is communicated to our judges. Uh, and so I really want to highlight that. And similarly, um, the the form the application is designed to support you in making the points that are going to help your application be as competitive as possible and so responding directly to the questions that are act, asked and in a way that's um as complete as possible is going to is going to really support your applications. And so those are the two points that I just want to make sure that everybody hears because I think they're really key. And I, I think that they're going to support you all in making really competitive applications. And from there, we can dive into questions. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ceci, for um, contributing that aspect as well. And um, so in terms of questions that we have, I think we'll tackle them two by two, um, just to save time. So one question that came up, um, this is from Marish, um, mentioning what is the policy regarding indirect costs CG centers and non-CG partners can charge on this grant? So I'll repeat that again. So the question is about what is the policy regarding indirect costs CG centers and non-CG partners can charge on this grant? Would you like to take that, Joe, or should I? Uh, so Brian, uh, maybe Brian can uh, clarify if I'm wrong, but uh, no, we didn't have any restriction or anything. This is typical um, the kind of CGIR program. So it will be, become CGIR project. So unless there is something prohibiting us to make it become CGIR project, uh, which at that point you will probably already know. Um, no, we, we haven't had any issue about you know, too high indirect cost or anything. So I don't think there will be there never been an issue. I, I hope that there will not be an uh, issue uh, in this round. So. so Brian, do you have any other ideas about this? So with regard to um, indirect costs that could be uh, charged back to big data, so I mean, we work through something called program participant agreements that Big Data Platform as a program has in place with all of the centers. And um, We've, we've, under that, if it's getting charged back to us, there is actually a cap on indirect costs at 15% for third parties. And so the, the default contracting option way of doing these awards is through these program participant agreements out to centers. And then they would do, ideally do, we've made a couple of exceptions, we try not to, um, 
then they ideally would do direct co co contracting with other parties. And so if it's if a center wishes to cover more overhead that uh, that an external partner has, that's fine. Um, however, in terms of, of overall overheads that get charged back to the big data platform um, for those third parties, that is capped at 15%. I hope that's I hope that's clear. And this is really based on the premise that um, uh, contracting will be happening uh, through centers that are um, you know partnering with other external actors around these around these awards. Right. I, I think we should clarify this in the uh, FA, a, FAQ. Page. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, um, because if we, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, great. Um, yeah, thanks. Marish, you can let us know in the chat if that um, answers a question that you had. Um, as a follow-up question from Marish, um, we have, who will cover the cost of travel to Hyderabad um, for the shortlisted mm -hmm. proponents? We will be happy to cover that. Directly. We cover we cover the cost for one individual from each team, yeah. and it that mm -hmm. is in the finalists, and it's up to the team to choose uh, which of their team members is chosen for that. And if they want to send additionals, that that cost is on them. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, and then in terms of timeline, um, we have a question here from Chris, who's asking, when will the applicants find out if they have moved on to the next round? So uh, the timeline uh, is that they should know by end of July at the or very early August at the latest, um, but likely earlier. Okay, so end of July, great, thank you. So yes, people, please do keep your questions coming in. Um, there's a question again from Chris asking about if it's possible to access examples of proposals from prior prior years to better understand the proposal formats or guidelines. Is that a possibility? So we do have uh, information on all of our prior winners online at bigdata.cgiar.org slash inspire. Um, we don't have their original proposals available and those won't be available publicly, but you can see all of the information on how they've built out their projects, how they've developed their partnerships and all of that is available online. Okay, great. So that okay, awesome. Um, we, and oh, sorry, go also, ahead. Sorry, sorry mm -hmm. we also highly recommend you go check out that report that Brian referenced. That's got a lot of really interesting and useful information for applicants uh, for 2019. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse, for that. Um, and this um, is a comment from Martin Parr. Uh, Martin says. Thank you. Looking forward to reaching out to you in the next few days. Um, after being a judge in 2018, he, uh, Martin now has an interesting concept to put to the platform from the other side. He hasn't found the right CGIR partner yet, but he would value um, advice from Jeu and Brian and would be reaching out to you by email. So that's a comment that just came through from Martin. Sure. Yeah, Did we will be happy to put it. I hope you put it into the forum here. Yeah? Yeah. That's Into what I was going to say. Form. The partnership search form, that's what it's there for. Remember, yeah. it closes June 3. So if you're still looking for a partner, make sure you fill out the partner search form by June 3. Yeah. Great. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. Brian, go ahead. Oh, I mean, we're trying to, um, uh, what's the word, disintermediate, get out of the way of the partnership. Uh, thing and just uh, you know connect all those who are wishing to connect with each other and sort of get out of the way of what happens what happens from there. But, uh, we have uh, we have an exceptional pool of both CG and external folks that are searching for partners and there's just a wealth of resources and opportunities that are there just waiting for you to find the right partner. So anybody on here who is still looking for a partner that has not filled out that form, highly recommend it. Okay, great. So people should, yes, definitely go and fill the partner matching form. Um, another question that's from Yapin is specifically about particular things that you're looking for in the main proposal. So the question is, um, the guide document has specific, it has a specific questions part and the main proposal part. Um, and to your opinion, it seems that the specific questions seem to have already addressed the innovation and data usage paths. So the question is about whether the main proposal, more clarity on 
whether the main proposal should also address those specific parts as well. The key to the main proposal, which is also not a huge, um, it's not a huge piece of writing, right? Uh, but the key there is to make sure that you get across the narrative across all of those various parts. So if you've already said something in another question, you don't need to restate it. But what you do need to do is reconnect um, what you've said elsewhere to the bigger narrative, to how how all of those parts come together. And so um, the main proposal should be should be more of a connector of all of those things and and then a fleshing out of anything that you didn't get a chance to say elsewhere. Any additions, Jawu or Brian? That's um, no, yeah, that's good, yeah. Okay, great. So the main proposal as a connector. Um, and in addition to that, the other question is around the budget splits policy between CGIAR and non-CGIAR partners. Could you provide more details on that? There are no rules, but um, if you keep in mind what meaningful collaboration looks like, um, it's likely going to be hard to make the argument that there's meaningful collaboration if one partner gets 95% and another partner gets 5%. I'm not saying it's impossible that you can make that argument that there is still meaningful collaboration. I'm saying that it becomes much more difficult and you really have to make that argument, right? And so think about what does meaningful collaboration mean for your proposal and if if and and what does the budget split have to have to actually represent that in hard numbers and and then also make sure that you support that in in whatever um additional documentation and, and questions that you answer around that awesome. i would just add it's a it's a it's a it's a useful data point as we look at this question of meaningful collaboration um, potentially, but it doesn't. It's not a hard, uh, hard rule either. I mean, that said, the um, the CGIR center, um, you know, would would basically have to say yes. We want the partner to take the lion's share of the of the grant money. Okay, great. Um, and then following up from that, the question is, um, what about what about partners who already have some seed money? Is that something people can mention in their proposal if they already have seed money? Sure. Yeah, that sounds yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, John. So you heard that. Um, and wow, the questions keep coming. Well, this is exactly what the. <laughs> <laughs> Just to, follow on to, to follow on to the seed money question, because that would imply there's something that's kind of starting to roll already somewhere. Um, again, uh, 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 a developed solution is fine so long as through partnership something new is happening. If that yep. makes sense. So the great, meaningfulness great of that collaboration, you know. Um, and so, uh, anyway, yeah, I'll stop there. Okay, Ceci, were you about to say something? No, I was yeah. just saying that that's a great add-on. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I think we do keep coming back to the concept of meaningful collaboration and what that means um, to various applicants. Um, so another question we have here from Patrice um, asking about, okay, Patrice has four different questions. So I'll start with the first one. Um, are there any specific target groups that the judges are focusing on this year? Is the first question. No, what we would, what you ke should keep in mind is that we do want to see the pathway to um, to the farmer, right? Um, that doesn't necessarily mean or pa or pathway to impact, um, yeah. but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a particular target group. We just need to understand what the pathway is uh, to impact. Okay, great. Um, and then the second question also from Patrice is about um, the kind of data that can be used. So Patrice says, um, should the data be used only be from CGIER or would you accept a combination of different data sources? So for example, using satellites and CGIER for the grant. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it doesn't have to be only CGIER, but it'd be good to have some, um, it's good to see the value of CGIER data. Um, that's I saw judges kind of uh, give more acknowledgement and 
a little bit of preference. But yeah, of course, no, it doesn't have to be like 100% CGI data and satellite data. Yeah, a lot of people are, are leveraging geospatial data, remote sensing data. So that, that's absolutely true. Yeah. That, that's We'd good. love to see innovative use of data, whatever oh, yeah, that right. data yeah. is, right? So mm -hmm. it, maybe it's underused data, maybe it's traditionally misused data, maybe it's data that um, folks don't even think to use already. Um, so highlighting any of those aspects of the data that you're going to use in addition to whether you're using CG data is those are really key and will will definitely bolster your application. Exactly. And we love to see different types of data linked together uh, to generate new insight. So yeah, keep in mind that uh, different types of data can really make big data, pro big data, uh, really improve your value. Awesome. Thanks. Um, and also following up on that, um, does a CGI partner have to be an institution or can it be an individual working in CGI AR? It can be an individual researcher at CGI AR. However, what they're researching does need to map to one of the 12 CGI research programs uh, that are cross cutting and, and programs for, for CGI research. Um, you know, we're trying to develop new ways. And then, of course, the external partner would be external to CGIR. So, I mean, an individual, it can be an individual researcher. Their, what the, their particular research efforts need to map to um, one of these cross-cutting CGR research uh, programs. And uh, the CG uh, person will know what that means. Right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, and then in terms of, um, of the application process, um, do you give any feedback about why an application was not accept successful or um, improvement for the future? We will have uh, limited feedback uh, on the applicants. So we expect a very large number of applications this year. Last year we had um, just under 150. We're looking at at, at least 200 and we could very easily see over 300 applications this year. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have the capacity to give detailed feedback to all of our applicants. Um, what we will give you is is some sort of um, kind of classification of, uh, of what was kind of the main thing that that kind that didn't allow you to pass on to the next step. And so um, we expect to be able to give feedback specifically around these pre-assessment categories um, for anybody that doesn't make it to the finalist stage. Awesome, thanks. Um, okay, so we have about five minutes to go. I'm gonna keep just going up the questions. Um, so we have a question that's come up about someone, so Martin did respond back saying he filled out the form but didn't quite get the right match on a key idea. So is looking for advice on that. So what kind of mm -hmm. advice would you have on people who fill out the form, a match with a partner, but don't necessarily seem to think it's a right fit? So there is still more coming. Um, it, there will be more uh, additional partners that will come through the end of the partner search next week. Uh, and so look at that. Another um, angle I would say is to look at who maybe matches the closest and then reach out to them and see if they might have an idea or recommendation in their network. Uh, and then beyond that, if you're looking at a specific topic or area, um, you know, I guess the other way is to come via the CRPs and, and look at a CRP that might be working on that and then look to folks that are working within that CRP um, or within a center that's focused on that. So depending on that, but um, those would be my recommendations. And I, I really recommend you see what comes out next week and then move from there. So um, any other additions? Yeah. Um, and at uh, a CRP, for those who aren't in the know, is CGIR Research Program. Uh, there are the 12 uh, cross-cutting research programs that cut across all of our centers. Um, and I absolutely think that's the right, the right way to go. I mean, we want to keep those of us in the Big Data Platform Secretariat, we want to get ourselves out of that matchmaking thing so we are, we're very even-handed. Um, but I think it would be uh, appropriate to at least uh, flag this to some people that we know are in a particular CRP and see if they're interested. Um, so um, happy to be on the hook to do that. Um, I think, yeah. Yeah, and another potential area uh, entry point is community or practice. So CGIR 
uh, mm, uh, different types of commercial practices. And you can also find them through our big data uh, platform website. And the coordinator of each of the commercial practices, like uh, I'm, I'm coordinating geospatial data. And I, I got some of these questions, similar questions um, through my network, and I was able to connect them with each center and yeah. different program working on similar ideas. So I think they might have some uh, insight that are not uh, apparent in other places. So yeah, so big data, like, big data platform website convene communities of practice, and there are six different technical communities of practice that have their own lists and several hundred members. And yeah, and, and yeah, thanks, Joe. That's another great way to um, to reach out to partners or potential partners. Awesome, thanks. Um, and still on that thing of um, partners and potential partners, we have two questions here. Um, one about whether it's possible for proposal to have more than two partners external to CGIAR. And then the second question is, um, if they've already, if someone has already identified a partner, do they still need to fill out the partner search form? So those so are two questions. To the second question, absolutely not. If you've got a partner, great, go forth and apply. Um, and have a great time doing it. Uh, to the first one, you can have as many partners as you want. There, you'll see in the application there is primary CG partner, there is primary external partner, and then beyond that there's a section to add any additional partners. Um, we want to see meaningful collaboration, right? And if you are working on meaningful collaboration across three partners, across four, across six, I mean, six may be a little extensive, but uh, but just tell us what you're doing and how you're doing it and um, how you work that out is, is up to you. Just make sure that you communicate it well. I think that's a very credible way just to add. I think that's a very credible way to make arguments for impact as well. If you've got, uh, say, I don't know, a farmer's association mm -hmm. plus a digital innovator plus some CG data or something like that, like, I mean, it's when you start assembling the story about what the pathway is to impact partners become a very important part of that narrative as well. So. Great. I'm going to group some of these last questions together um, because of time. But um, essentially, to start with, um, so there's a, an applicant who's trying to submit. They're asking um, how they can submit an image as part of the proposal. Currently, the Google form. They cannot. Have, OK. So they cannot submit an image. OK, thanks for clarifying that. Um, and in case of a situation where there's a proposal that is very good, would you be able to suggest a CGIAR partner during the process? No, we cannot. You have to apply with a partner. Awesome. Thanks, SCV. Seems like easy. OK, and then the third one is, um, how important is it to have a business partner? You have to have a partner. They do not have to be a business. The external partner can be of any sector. It just cannot be within CG. Right. Awesome. And then I think we can tackle these last two. Um, so in a situation regarding what we talked about with seed money, the question is, um, this person has an overall high level concept, which is well formed. Will this then be seen as less innovative in the application because a donor has already given us given them seed money? It depends on the proposal. It's really hard to say that. It if you can argue that the relationship with the CG is producing something new, then maybe. But I, it, I don't think that that's something that we can answer on this call. Okay. <laughs> Um, we, we had a case, uh, actually, uh, just thinking about it in 2017, we had a case that was building on existing programs. So in that case, it was not exactly seed money, but they had some ongoing project, but they wanted to add something more. And that addition was really innovative and got really good score out of it. So I would say you probably don't want to put same idea that donor already gave money for, but if there are something you can kind of claim this is really additional value, and this is truly innovative. Uh, hasn't been really funded for exactly the same purpose. So then, yeah, then maybe that's still innovative. Great. Um, so that was actually one of the last questions that came through. Um, I would say to people that yes, please, if you do have any questions, um, what what's the best way to ask those questions if people have any future questions? Brian and Joe, Ceci. What's the best way to reach you all for, for any further questions? <laughs> uh, 
uh, <laughs> folks can reach out to me directly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Burns at a hyphen m hyphen z dot com or the big data uh, contact email will also big data also... big data yeah. org yeah right. also yeah. 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 yeah but either or okay. mm -hmm. great so people can reach out with um, any questions to that email that was listed but yes we are at time I just want to thank everybody for joining in um, are there any final questions? Um, comments or remarks from your end, Brian, um, Joe, Sessie, before we sign off. Thank you, everybody. I thank you, everybody. A lot of great proposals, yeah. Awesome. So th thanks, everybody, for um, joining in. Thanks for logging in, and thanks for providing and contributing those questions. Um, and we look forward, as they mentioned, to receiving those proposals. All right, signing off, everybody. Thank yeah. you. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye.